similar to, to, to the ALK story, there's a lot of traction and movement in the roster you arrange lung cancers. Um, Bob, you want to talk about, one, how you currently treat ROS rearranged lung cancer, and then two, some of the new data that's come out, including uh, the repotrectinib data that we saw, I believe, on Friday. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for ROS1 uh, rearranged lung cancer, you know, this is a smaller population than ALK. It's 1% to 2%. Um, the only FDA-approved option right now is crizotinib. I've been fortunate to have the intractinib trials at my institution, so all of our frontline patients with ROS1 rearranged lung cancer have been going on intractinib, and now we've presented data in the studies actually completed accrual, and we'll hopefully hear from the FDA soon. You know, the big difference between entrectinib and crizotinib is the CNS penetration. Um, we've seen really good activity um, in, in ROS1 positive patients with brain metastasis, 55% um, uh, uh, response rate in patients with uh, brain metastasis. Um, it's a little bit hard to compare the overall PFS in the population because there are so many different crizotinib trials. So we're talking about those heterogeneity in trials. There's an original phase one Pfizer upon which it it was uh, FDA approved uh, for crizotinib, um, but there were multiple other studies with a range of PFS anywhere from nine to 19 months. Um, one of the things that we just presented yesterday was a, a real world trial, a virtual trial of entrectinib uh, from the Star Trek trials and other trials versus crizotinib treated patients from the Flatiron uh, Health database. Um, and there we saw a doubling of the time to treatment discontinuation and a significant overall survival advantage. And indeed the data looked like what we would expect um, uh, in terms of why patients uh, with crizotinib were, were failing therapy. There was a steep drop off at about eight months for crizotinib. And when we looked into that data, it was all CNS progression. So I think it kind of mirrors what we think is, is improved with entrectinib, and that mirrors what we we've seen with electinib, brigatinib, and osimertinib in terms of having better upfront brain control, whether you have brain metastasis at the beginning or whether you're just at risk of developing them later on. Um, and that would really be potentially a new frontline option uh, for our patients. In terms of what do we do after these drugs, so crizotinib or presumably entrectinib, um, repotrectinib presented data this weekend. Um, and, and I think it's a very exciting drug. It has CNS penetration, one. Two, they demonstrated at least preliminary activity against the G2032R mutation in ROS1, which is one of the uh, common mutations that we see upon progression. I don't think we know how common it is yet. My guess is it's probably gonna be about 25 to 30% of patients with ROS1 G2032R, um, but hopefully it'll work in other patients as well. And so I think this may represent a future option because we really need to be able to sequence our ROS1 patients the same that we do in, in ALK. So currently, as a nice summary, currently crizotinib is still your treatment of choice for patients that are Rossier 1 off of a trial? Uh, <laughs> until this summer, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, okay. uh, no, I mean, really, I think, again, the CNS penetrant um, uh, thing is, is so important. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think it's it's really critical. And, and my crizotinib patient treated, treated patients who couldn't go on the trial for one reason or another fall off at about a year, just as you would expect yeah. for CNS progression. So. Is there data on attrectinib and crizotinib refractory patients? I think you mentioned is, is No, is, they is, explored, is there, they yeah. explored that that early on and they really weren't seeing a lot of activity except in the situation where there was CNS only progression although they really didn't pursue that either um, in terms of uh, managing resistance it's probably not very good there so it would really need to be used as a frontline option to control the brain metastasis and any comment on lorlotinib there was a cohort of Ross rear ones uh, in that study correct I mean is there yeah so there was it was a small cohort there were about 13 naive patients yeah. um, I think uh, with with great data but very small numbers again it's very good CNS penetration um, and then there was some data in the in the Ross one resistance but the response rate wasn't all that uh, fantastic and uh, it's unclear where that where that drug uh, is going, although it is available um, as an FDA-approved agent if you can get it off-label. Well, just just on that point, so the the, the lorlatinib in the post-crizotinib ROS1 cohort has got a 30-ish percent response rate, um, but it's got a 56 percent response rate intracranially. Mm -hmm. And what has not been shown is what contribution has that intracranial response rate had to that 30 percent response rate, because if you pull some of those out if they're just kind of CNS lesions responding, that number's even lower. Yeah. And it would be great to see that. Yeah, interesting. We've got a lot of, uh, uh, we gotta be a little patient, but I think we'll have some. We have asked multiple yeah. times. <laughs> um, incredible movement in that, in that genotype as well.